So today I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make houses that you can walk into and then leave. And then also make so that houses are different depending on which house you walk into. Now before you get started, you're actually going to need a couple different things from some previous tutorials of mine. All the links will be in the description and the iCard. So I'm starting out here with the simple top-down movement. I'm just going to take and restructure the folders a little bit. I'm just going to make some files to split things up. So I'm going to start with an art folder. And I'm just going to go ahead and just move all the art I have into the art folder. And then I'll do resources, scenes, and scripts. That way it's just easier to see what is what in here. I'm then going to take the player and make it its own scene. I'll just call this player. Inside that scene, I'm going to go ahead and add a button prompt. This was added in a button prompt tutorial, link in description. I'm then going to go ahead and just change the collision shape because for top down, circle is better for the most part. And I'm going to move that down there. And I'm going to move that down there to his feet and just decrease the size just a bit. Now from that button prompt tutorial, you probably have something that looks kind of like this code wise. We're going to change that just a little bit, so we're going to do var, instead of show prompt, we're going to do house, and this will be the house he's going to be entering, and that's going to be set equal to null. And then we're going to change this to set house, this set house, new house, and then instead of just checking if the new value is true or false, we're going to do if new house is not equal to null, we're going to do key prompt dot show and prompt dot play. Now it's key prompt dot hide and prompt dot stop. The reason is because I ended up naming stuff different in this tutorial. And also because house equal to null will be no house and then this is going to be an instance of the house so we could call stuff on the house. And you shouldn't need this process from that. We're going to handle the whether to show the prompt different or not. You're then going to want to set up an environment with some houses that the player could walk into. I showed this in a making environment tutorial, link is also description. I will drag and drop that over from the tutorial into this. So I got the scene I built from that tutorial moved over, so I'm just going to go ahead and add the player to it. And I'm actually going to remove the houses because I want to do custom houses in this one to where they each have their own script so I could give them each insides and stuff like that. I'm also going to put a Y sword in here. This, I'm just going to put it right between the houses and the other. I'm going to put the player in it. I'm going to put all the houses that I add into it so that the player could be in front of or behind the house dependent on his position. And now that everything is set up to get started, I'm going to start by building the houses. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a new scene. This is just going to be house. I'm then going to add a sprite of a single house. I was just going to use this and transition between them, but the houses are all different sizes. So changing the animation doesn't really work for that. I went ahead and split up all the houses to be their own image. And we'll start with the leftmost house. That was house 2. And I'm going to set its position to about 0, negative 20. The reason I'm not setting it to 0, 0 is with the Y sort, I want the origin to be around here so that when the character goes more north or more up than that, they will be behind the house. And more down from that, they'll be in front of the house. I'm then going to create a collision. And I'm going to leave a little lip so you can walk right behind the house because this isn't completely top-down perspective. And the next thing I'm going to do is add an area 2D and this is going to be the doorway. And basically when they walk into the doorway I'm going to make so that they could interact with it and enter into the house. So I'm going to attach a script to the house and I'm going to go ahead and just start adding that feature. So the doorway I'm going to do body entered and body exit. When you enter the doorway, we want the body to call body.house equals self. So we're going to reference this house so that the player, we're going to set the house. And if the house isn't an equal to null, it's going to set the button prompt. And then when they exit the doorway, we're going to set it to null. Body.house equals null. But this is actually a minor issue. If you have two doorways at the exact same spot, when they leave one doorway, it's going to leave both of them. So we're going to do if body.house equals body, body.house equals null. That way if it's referencing a different body, this house doesn't cancel them from entering a different house. In most cases, it won't be a problem. If it is equal to self, we want to set it to null. My bad. Enter the house into the area we have. I think it was about right there. 
and I'll give it a run. And it crashes. The reason is because body doesn't have a house. And that is because this area is seeing the static body 2D. So what we're going to do is make so that the doorway can't collide with the house. And that's going to be in the collision layer. So I'm going to remove this and set this to there. But actually, layer 1, layer 2 becomes quite difficult. So I'm going to go into project settings, scroll all the way down to 2D physics, and I'm going to do objects. For now, that'll be the house or anything you could collide with. And I'm going to do player. So I'm basically saying this could only interact with the player. And it's not a part of any layer because we don't want anything to interact with it at the moment. Now, if we look into the player, the player is, I'm going to go into the player scene. Player's collision is currently an object. Let's change that to player. And player interacts with objects. If this is a multiplayer game and you want players to collide, you would turn on player. Now, if we run this, and I have the wrong one selected. So I'm going to go project, project settings, run, click there, and I'm going to select the node 2D. Now, if we run this, the player has his thing. We didn't set up the ready to cancel that. So I'm going to do fun ready set house null because having this doesn't default call the set house ready is already a thing let's just put that in there there we go just clean that up a bit and let's put the house into the y sort around this there we go that looks a bit better e appears and then e disappears now we're going to want to detect if they press the interact key which in this case is e so i'm going to do function unhandled input unhandled input allows us to make so they can't interact with stuff when they have a menu open essentially. If event is input event key and event is action pressed interact and house is not equal to null. We're gonna call house dot enter. So it'll be calling a function on the house. So if there is a house to interact with and we press the interact key, we're gonna enter the house. So I'm gonna go in the house and add that function. function enter and this will be what gets called i'm going to go project settings input map interact add key e and for now i'm just going to print enter house so i'm going to run this and if i press e while next to the house it's going to say enter house okay so that did call that function cool cool next thing i'm going to need to build a scene that is the inside of the house and for the inside of the house, I found this interior home tile set. I'm going to go ahead and download it. Link in description. So I'm just going to drag that in. Make sure you turn off the filter for pixel alert. If you're not doing pixel alert, don't do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and create another resource called inside. So I have the outside of the house. I'm going to do resource for inside. And this will be a tile set. And for this one, I'm just going to do single tiles because everything will probably look the same inside the house. And then I'm going to do a little black area for the background. I'll call this inside one because we're going to have multiple different insides. And I'm going to do inside. I'm going to add a tile map and I'm just going to attach the inside. And I'm going to go ahead and just decrease the size. Let's do 16, 16 because we're going to be starting with this one. And I'm just going to call this guy void dot there dot there paint bucket. And then I'm going to attach a camera. Same zoom as the other one, set it to current. And then I'm going to do another tile map. And this will be the actual house. So it's still too big. I'm going to do 32 by 32. And let's go ahead and have this one be the exit. And I'm just going to draw a little nice house here. And I'm going to go ahead and just drag in a player here. And let's set up that transition so that changes to this house. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to attach something to this. That'll be like export packed scene layer inside scene. And this is going to allow me to, on this node 2D, just go ahead and click on that house. And that'll be the inside scene. I'm just going to go to inside one and just drag that right in there. Now it's going to have an uh, instance of that scene. And then on the enter, we're going to change the scene to the name of that scene or the path of it. So I'm going to do git tree change scene inside scene dot resource path. So that's going to get the path of it, which is going to be the res scenes inside one and that's going to change the scene to that so i'm going to go ahead and try that run up to the house press e and it changed the scene and i can move around but there are no collisions or anything and i can't leave the scene so on the inside i'm going to attach a script for outside and the reason i would do a variable is because some of the insides might have different outsides if you're doing multiple different outside scenes for now it'll all just be the same scene 
And then I'm just going to do an area 2D at the door and we'll call this exit. When the body enters, I change the scene back to the outside. However, I don't want it to immediately change it back to the outside scene because the player is already standing in the exit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a variable called enter and I'll say if entered, and then I'll change the scene. And then when they first exit the exit area, and then I'm going to say they entered the house. So I'm going to do entered equals true. So now I'm going to run this, and then run in, run back out, and it didn't change. This collision doesn't work with players yet, so make sure you change that to only work with players. Looks like I named it the wrong scene. I'm just going to rename this to outside. Rename outside scenes. I oh, yeah. naming everything wrong today. And then, you probably noticed, I immediately teleport back to the center when I leave the house. So I go into the house, go in a bit, leave, and it teleports me back to zero zero. So, we're gonna want to make so that it saves the place of the player before he enters the house, that way he can walk out at the same part. That, or each house would keep track of a spot that it spawns the player at when they leave the house. Either way, you need to track which house the player is in, or where he entered from. There's benefits to either. For this tutorial, I'll show you how to keep track of the player. So I'm going to set up a global script. I'm just going to call this global project, project settings. I'm going to do auto load, tell it to auto load the script, global. Add that in, and then I'm going to do fur player position. And we're going to do a vector 2, and that should default to vector 2, 0, so 0, 0. Now in the player, when we tell him to enter the house, we're just going to say global dot player position equals global position. And then on the ready, we're going to say set position to player position. Global position equals global dot player position. Now we're going to run this. And if we enter the house, well, it looks like we started over there because we didn't make it scene specific. And we exit the house. So we exited the house at the right spot, but now it's not entering the house. Now we just need to make sure it's only doing this ready when they're outside, not when they're inside. And an easy way to do this would be just to move this to a script that is outside. That way the player doesn't call it on themselves. So I'll set up an outside script really quick and just move that one set of global position. We're going to go ahead and do the y sort slash player dot global position. Now if we try that, we can walk into a house and then leave, and leave at the same spot we walked into the house. Now I'm just going to show you how to set up a second house, and it's basically the same, but a little bit different. I would probably just duplicate this house, so we have house 2, and then you're going to go ahead and do editable children, because instead of loading this house, we're going to want to load a different house. And let's go ahead and build this house next. So house 2, all these are going to move around, so I'm going to lock them all for now, that way I can move the main house. There we go, got it right over there. I'm then gonna take this doorway, put it right in the doorway, and then just lock its position. And then I'm gonna take the body of it, unlock its position, and just increase it to the size I want. That'll probably be good. And then I'm gonna need to add another body to cover up this section. So I'm just gonna do another static body with a collision shape. And I'm not gonna worry about it being perfect because this is just a tutorial. It looks like these are both referencing the same collision. So, what am I going to do is I'm actually going to change this collision back to there, there, and then I'll just replace both of those because that fits there about. There we go. Now this house is going to take you to the first inside. So I'm going to go ahead and build a second inside for it. So I'm just going to duplicate the inside. Oh, I'm just going to take, duplicate, and I'm going to call that inside, yeah, whoops, inside two. And on inside two, we're gonna make it have kind of an L shape. And I think it's a bit longer, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do the tile map. Draw kind of this L shape. That way we have a different inside. Now if I go to the outside and I go to the second house, I have the inside scene. I'm just gonna drag inside two to that. Go ahead and run that, test that, and it looks like they both have different insides. And we didn't really add collisions to the insides. I assume you guys could do that by yourselves. Just go out and do a static body, and then I would do a collision polygon, and then just draw the inside. Thank you for checking out this tutorial. Hopefully you were, you was able to learn something, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Goodbye.